Ma'am, I have a phobia for maths. I'm not a maths person. Now, this is a phrase I encounter regularly while taking mathematics class for entrance exams like CAT, GMAT, GRE, CLAT, and IPM. Be it an IB student, CBSC, ICSC, or state board, this feeling resonates from students all across India. Aren't we as a society doing grave injustice by creating such mindset? Nothing is more important today. In today's increasingly complex and AI world, the most important thing we can do is to nurture mathability. Mathability is a skill that teaches children how to think. If you observe hawkers or villagers, they had an inherent mental aptitude to solve problems. Somehow our education system has resulted in unwanted mindset and mental blocks. We are all born curious and carry the seeds of genius within us. Then I always wonder, what exactly leads to this change in attitude for mathematics later in life? Understand what leads to creating such mental block in the minds of the students. The first problem is, of course, the rigidity or the fixed approach, the conventional approach that is taught in our schools. An ordinary maths class begins with rules and memorizing steps with a fixed step approach. There's hardly any room for creativity. There's hardly any thinking happening here. In all real life problems, what matters most is the final solution. There can be many ways of reaching the goal. Let's take an example to understand the rigidity or the fixed method of solving questions. Let's take this question. Three friends went to a restaurant and saw a bowl of mints. Sita took one third of the mints but returned four back into the bowl. Fatima took one fourth of what was left but returned three. Gita took half of the remainder but returned two back into the bowl. Seventeen mints were left in the bowl. So find the original number of mints. One of the major problems which I find in all my classes is students usually start with the traditional approach of taking the number of mints to be X. There's nothing wrong with this approach. But the whole idea, let's talk about an entrance exam, is we need to have multiple approaches. So let's say in this case, the options are far apart. So it doesn't make sense to solve the whole question. Right. For example, none of the options are multiple of three. So there's no need to solve the question. Or if the options were multiples of three, there's a backtracking method. So it's important that the student doesn't have only one way of solving. There are multiple methods and they should be comfortable in trying the different methods and taking the decision which one to use as per the context. The next problem which usually happens is the lack of engagement or sometimes the student doesn't get acknowledged in a class. In a mathematic, mathematics class, it's really important that we are able to connect to each and every student. We are not living in a colonial world where rules have to be followed without questions. Today, it is about acknowledging all types of learners in the class and absolutely engaging with them. The teacher simply becomes the facilitator. The teacher is not the answer key. It's important that the teacher gives the kind of scaffolding for the student to solve the question. So let's take an example. Instead of memorizing the formula for area of a triangle is half base into height. So take a triangle and ask the students to imagine if there's a rectangle and the triangle is inside the rectangle then what would be the area of the triangle in terms of the rectangle? Do you think it's like one third? So here a student might come across uh, with a thought process. What if I drop a height, a perpendicular? So can I say this particular line divides the two rectangles. So can you see the equal area? So this gives us a very good clarity that the area of a triangle is half of that of the rectangle or area of a triangle is half base into height. Another frequent problem 
which student face in a maths class is the language for example commutative law in maths says that the order of terms doesn't matter by performing while performing multiplication or addition sometimes we totally alienate the students with tricky language or sometimes the questions are asked in a format like arman tells his daughter 7 years ago i was 7 times as old as you are now also 3 years from now i shall be thrice as old as you will be then what is arman's age i've seen many a student totally freeze just by looking at the language and then they blame maths sometimes it could be the language is a problem the language is not made in an easy way we 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 alienate the students in fact galileo said maths is a language of the universe somewhere along the lines we have taken this beautiful language and abstracted it beyond recognition make mistake one of my common dialogue in all my classes is it's okay to make mistake that's one important way of knowing how to solve a question so i keep telling the students that not knowing is not failure is the first step to understanding so usually i start a geometry class with this particular question the students have already gone through all the types of triangle like scalene isosceles and equilateral triangle and i ask them what kind of triangle is this can you identify the students are quick to jump to conclusion and confidently give the answer as isosceles triangle so when i say no it's incorrect that usually picks their interest and someone usually comes up with a solution that in this case triangle abc abc is not a triangle because on a 8 cm long line bc if i draw 4 and 4 a will be exactly the midpoint of bc so it's a line you cannot form a triangle so instead of teaching that length of two sides of a triangle has to be always greater than the third side you can show with an example like this the last one of the most important thing in mathematics is always giving the students a context and perspective students are always curious why are we doing maths in the first place what's the whole point of this so it's important to answer that question give them the clarity it makes sense to provide them with a story instead of just memorizing formulas let's say uh, the formula for average is sum of all numbers upon number of observation median is a central number when the numbers are arranged in ascending order mode is a number which repeat maximum number of times so instead give them a question for example in a class of 10 students the marks obtained in mathematics are 90 there are nine students who got 90 and one student who got 10 so what do you think should i use mean or median right so if i use mean i will be adding 90 into 9 which is 810 plus 10 which is 820 divided by number of observation which is 10 so in this case i get 82 and what if i take the median so median would be the central number which is 90 so here you can always ask a question which which makes more sense is it mean or is it median in ai world post pandemic we see so many changes around us as educators it is time for us to ensure that no student is left behind in any of the maths class Math ability is one of the most important skills that is needed today which actually enhances the problem solving ability and critical thinking of the students. Let's take inspiration from Indian mathematician Srinivas Ramanujan who was so ahead of his times. He had an intuitive approach towards mathematics. The reflections on water in maths these patterns reveal themselves in the most incredible form. 